What's up, what's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It is Tuesday. I mean, excuse me. It is Wednesday. Well, it really is actually Tuesday, but by the time y'all get this, it'll be Wednesday. But either way, it's Real Talk Wednesday, so you guys already know that. Um, so this one is going to be kind of short. I'm only going to do two today because I do have to go pick up one of my kids. And um, I'm just, like, really got, like, this huge like busy schedule this week. I haven't been feeling like my best, you know, my, I'm just kind of been like a little under the weather, um, especially with like myself. So I will be going to the doctors tomorrow. Finally, I am so happy because I don't know if you guys have been, um, I've told you guys in like a recent video, but my knee has been really bothering me, um, my right knee, and it has hurt to the point where I don't really get much sleep at night, you know, it'll be like two to three hours that I get sleep, so I haven't really gotten any sleep in the past four days, you know, the pain will go away for like a couple of weeks, but then when it comes back, it's worse, and it just lasts even longer, like when I say long, I'm talking about the pain will last like a couple of weeks, so right now I am like really, really exhausted because I have I've not really been able to sleep that good at night because of my knee and it's just like the worst pain in the world so um well not next to childbirth but that could be it could be like up there in that category so I'm so happy and excited to be going to the doctor tomorrow I hope I don't have to be you know going through the run around you know going here going there for x-rays because my knee is like really really killing me so that has been what I've been going through um I'm still going to the gym. I was kind of disappointed about it last week, um, so I didn't go Friday because I went to, you know, my doctor's office, and this was for a totally different thing, so I will be going to get surgery soon for a hysterectomy, and trust me, I am not upset about that. You can take it all. I have them over. It's whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it seemed like when she weighed me, it was like I only lost two pounds, huh? so it's like a real disappointment. Um... You know, so I didn't go on Friday. Um, and normally I go Monday through Friday, but I didn't go last Friday because I was just like really, really kind of like upset about that. So, you know, I am going through a lot of stuff. I guess when you get older, that old age will really, really hit you. So, yes, I'm not really excited about the hysterectomy thing because, you know, it does take some time to heal from that. But there are two types of surgeries, or probably more than two, but, you know, there are two ways that you can go about doing this. So, either way, I just wanted to get over and done with, and as well as my knee. So, yes. And also my shirt here, I did wear this in the previous video but it did not look like this i had to go and redesign the shirt because the collar was too damn tight and i'm already hot at times so i really don't need no collar feeling like it's about to choke the life out of me you know what i'm saying so i did redesign it and put my own little added touch to it you know what i mean just to make it wearable and i like it like this i actually do like it like this so i've done actual three shirts like this you know it makes it look a little bit more feminine because it was in the men's section but I still thought it was cute because it's Rugrats and you know my kids love Rugrats so yes that has what been what I have been going through other than that it's just the same old same old I'm still up to the same shit doing videos making wigs you know my health ain't that drastic it's just like some ailments you know and, and women womanly bodily parts that gotta go you know how you get new you need new parts for your car well a bitch need new parts for her body okay I wish I can get some real new parts but anyway so let's get into this real talk if you guys need a real talk situation done about your life history or your life situation you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com make sure to put in the subject line real talk other than that you can change the names in the story if you like just let me know but other than that let's get on to this real talk y'all hmm <laughs> Okay, you guys, so I don't mean to uh, rush this, but, you know, you know, like I said, I do have somewhere to get to, and I wanted to kind of do this during the daytime because the daylight, sunlight is, like, the best. Natural lighting is the best. Um, and as for the hair that I have on, this is a half wig. No, it's not even a half wig. It's a wig by Motown Trust that was brand new. I had it in my garage for, like, three years. I found this humongous bin of of wigs and I was like oh shoot I'm about to put this on so I do have like a bunch of new scarves and I do have a video showcasing how I hang up my scarves and you can make it really inexpensive so I will have that video up for you guys really really soon but other than that yes let's get on to this real talk <laughs> 
So this one is April. Please help me out. I know you will keep it real whether I'm wrong or not. You can call me Jada and my sister Mika. Me and my younger sister Mika share an apartment and recently she says she is about to break the lease and move because my boyfriend is over all the time. You can call my boyfriend Vince. She stated that she didn't agree on having someone else living here without paying rent. Vince has his own apartment and does not live here, but I will admit that he is here very often. I never go to his apartment because he lives in West Philly where they shoot in his building every day and I'm not trying to get shot. It hurt my feelings that she said she was moving out because we have never had a disagreement since we were teenagers. We are now 28 and 25. After she sent me that message, I told him that he could not come over anymore. And he said that I was letting her get in between our relationship. I told her that I would just look for another place to move as well as if she really wanted to leave that bad. The other day, my boyfriend's brakes went out and he asked to stay over because his job is right down the street from my house. It broke my heart to have to say no to him. He told me that was fucked up and I ended up sneaking him in, but told him he had to be quiet. I'm 28 years old and I don't feel like I should have to sneak anyone into my own apartment. I feel like this situation is coming between our relationship and it will kill me if we broke up because of it. Please tell me what I can do to make this better. I care about Mika and Vince very much, but I pay rent as well and this doesn't seem fair, Jada. It don't seem fair. I mean, you know what? Now, let's see. It's two sisters. They're three years apart. They've never had a disagreement since they were teenagers. They live together. You know, they both pay rent. Mika is the... I'm not sure if Mika is the younger or the older one. Um, But either way, Mika is the one sister and Jada is another. Jada is the one whose boyfriend, Vince, is constantly over there. She doesn't really want to go to her boyfriend's apartment dwelling because he lives on the west side of Philly. And they constantly shooting up in his building. And I'm sorry, but I can't blame her. I really wouldn't want to be caught in a crossfire of anybody's bullet because they don't have names on them. So to alleviate all of that, I think I would feel a lot more safer and comfortable in my own home. Now, he don't live there. None of his stuff is there. Maybe a toothbrush and a pair of underwear, but that's not really considered to be living in anybody's home. So I'm not really sure what the issue is and why she has a problem with it. I need some water. Hold on. Now, me personally... I don't really see an issue with it. As long as your portion of the bills and rent is being paid, what does it matter? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he may be over there. He may be sucking up some of the electricity, charging his phone or whatever, using some of the water or whatever. But the, still, the fact is he did not live there. His name is not on a lease. And he is over there all the time. We're both adults. Maybe she feels somewhat uncomfortable around him and she's not able to walk around in her undergarments and just relax. And if that's the case, then maybe she needs to come to you and say that I get that. Maybe there needs to be a little bit of, you know, compromising between one another. Like if there's seven days in a week, maybe he can come over like four days out of the week. But you can't just like tell him, listen, you can't come over at all because it's not fair to you. You guys are grown ups. This is not mommy and daddy's apartment and I live with them and they're telling me, no, I cannot have company. You guys are roommates. Plus, you're also family members, sisters. And it's not fair. You know what I'm saying? It's not fair to you. It's not fair to your sister as well as it's not fair to your boyfriend either. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure you guys are sharing an apartment together to help share the cost of living because I'm pretty sure that it's not fucking cheap. You know what I'm saying? So what you really need to do, Jada, is have a talk with your sister and come in come, come in the middle and meet one another in the middle and let her know, listen, I want to live with you. I really don't want to go to his apartment. Let her know the reasons, the concerns of why you don't want to be on the, that one side of town. I'm pretty sure your sister will not and would not want you to be caught in between crossfires of anybody shooting you know what I mean I'm pretty sure that she is also concerned about your safety but just let her know hey listen I understand your concerns and I understand maybe you don't have time to do things in the apartment as you would please like if it were me I would probably kind of feel some type of way like okay he's always over here because if there's seven days out of the week and he's over there seven days that can be a little bit too much like listen dude we didn't move in as, as a three team we moved in as a two team and I understand that's your boyfriend, you know, and I understand that he wants to come over. I'm not telling you that he can never come over, but can you just have some consideration for me and my boundaries? Because I'm also a female and I do have female needs, meaning I like to walk around in the home in my undergarments. I just like to do certain things. And sometimes when he's here, it's just a lot. I get it. I can, I totally understand and can get it. And if it were me, 
I would feel that way too if I have a roommate and her boyfriend is constantly over there seven days out of the week. That's just like, listen, now you taking up bathroom space and bathroom time. You sucking up my AC. You sucking up my cable. You sucking up my internet. Listen, nigga, you're going to have to stay home out of seven days. You don't have to stay home at least like three of those days. Like break them up every other day. Maybe you guys can come to an understanding to where he can come over every other day, but not every day because every day for company is a lot. And if that's the case, and if you want to be around him, Jada, every fucking single day and night, then maybe you and he should get an apartment together. You know what I'm saying? And work on that. But you and your sister came in this together and I really don't feel like it's fair on her part to have to leave because of your shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's not when I say shit, I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm just meaning as your company. But you don't want anybody leaving the relationship heartbroken. You don't want to break up your boyfriend. And I don't think that it needs to go to that. But listen, you shouldn't have to sneak anyone in your apartment either. What I'm saying to you is you need to have a conversation with your sister and not text and leave each other messages because that's just really childish and that's really no way of communicating with one another. You telling me that's the message that she left you is that she's going to break the lease. It's not really cool if you're communicating through text messages. People say one thing, you can reread the text message and you can take it as another thing. What you need to do is communicate like grown ass adults like y'all been doing before cell phones even came out is use verbal verbal. Verbally talk to one another. If y'all don't have the time to talk to one another face to face, then I would really consider calling each other on the phone. Not sitting there with your thumbs and talking with your fucking fingers because that's really childish and that's not what grown ups really do. Grown ups don't do shit like that. So, in my mind, in my truly honest opinion, Breaking a lease is not really great. You can tell your sister that as well because that can kind of like mess up any type of credit she may have. It can also be on her record for breaking lease or she wants to go somewhere else and rent an apartment. Other landlords look at that as she's not content, she's not stable, she can't make up her mind, and they don't want to rent to her. And you don't want that on her record as well as yours either. So I would honestly have a conversation with her. Because like I said, there's seven days out of the week. And if that motherfucker's over there seven days out of seven days, that's a little bit much. And maybe you need to consider that as well, Jada. Like, listen, if that were you, if the shoe was on the other foot, how would that make you feel? You know what I'm saying? Now you got to sneak people in because you have made your sister feel really uncomfortable. And we don't want to make any family members feel uncomfortable, especially somewhere where they live at. You feel me? You get what I'm saying? So for the most part, I would say... The most important thing for you to do is to have a conversation with her and let her know, listen, I've never meant, I've never meant to make you feel uncomfortable and unwanted. I can totally understand, but I don't want to go to his apartment because this is the reason they're shooting. And that's like going into the jungle and bitch, I ain't ready to get shot. Not no time soon. Let her know that and let her know, can we compromise if he can come over at least four days out of the week, every other day, would that be all right with you? Because I really don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. You never know. You guys are sisters. You guys have moved together for a reason because you are close. And even though you are sisters and you're grownups, sometimes relationships can come in between a relationship with you and a family member who you're really close with, like your sister, <clears throat> and she may feel like she's not getting enough of your time because you're constantly around Vince. I get that too. You know what I'm saying? If he wasn't there all that time and now he's there all the time, it kind of is kind of like he's intruding, you know what I'm saying? On sisterly time, you do need time for each other as well as you need time alone. Let me tell you something. It's cool to have a boyfriend. It's cool to be in a relationship and it may even be cool to live with one another, but sometimes you motherfuckers need to take a break and come up with some fucking air. Okay. Because yes, it's nice. The niggas around all the time. Oh, great. He's here. He's here again. Here we go. Here we go. But Sometimes people could take that as like a little overwhelming. Like, listen, he's kind of invading my space. I can't even get out the shower without fully covering myself or walking through my damn house without fully covering myself. Like, come on. Sometimes it could be a little bit too much and a little, a little overwhelming. I can totally understand and I totally get it. So you need to have a compromise and you need to have some type of respect for her feelings and privacy as well because you guys didn't move together. You guys didn't move with you, Jada, Mika and Vince. It is Mika and Jada and that's it. Company is always great to have around, but 
you have to always think about the other person and take that person's feelings into consideration just as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it might be fucked up on his part that, oh, he wasn't invited over because his brakes gave out, but I'm pretty sure, nigga, you can make it home in them brakes. You have to understand. You need to explain that to him as well. Like, listen, Vince, that is my sister, and we do need to have time. She does need to have time, and maybe it's best that you come over every other day. And if you want to see this man every day, that's great. Meet up the days that he's not able to come over there. But you do guys have to have some type of meeting one another in the middle so each person can be happy. Because in the long run, you care about them both, but you really don't want to break up with neither one of them. And I'm sorry, but I'm not about to choose nobody over my sister who's been there with me all my life and we're like this. I'm not about to choose, but I'm not going to feel like I'm in the position to have to choose because that as well can be really, 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 really uncomfortable. Oh God, my nose is itching, my allergies, it's everything today. So in the end, Jada, you're not really wrong, but you're wrong. You know, you guys both are wrong. You and your sister are both wrong because of the way you guys have both come into the situation and are attacking the situation and messaging each other. It's time to be grown-ups because we are grown-ups, and it's time to meet each other in the middle and have a nice sister and sister talk. And I'm pretty sure you guys can do that without messaging each other through text messages. Text messages are really great to do sometimes, but really let's be honest it's not the best way of communication because a text message could come through and you can take it as one way when the person really didn't mean it like that you know what i'm saying so my opinion i think you really need to have a conversation with her and let her know your issues and find out what hers are so that way you can meet in a medium and come to a solution and that way nobody has to move out and nobody has to be snuck in Okay, so yes, give Mika your opinion or Jada your opinion of what you would do in a situation. Me personally, I would have a conversation with her, but I get it. I wouldn't want him over seven days a week neither. And I'm not, I'm not saying that as hateful or hating, but everybody needs privacy, especially in your own home. You know what I'm saying? You need privacy. Okay, so this one is called Real Talk Waiting on a Proposal. I just love when my... Um, subscribers can send me pictures of themselves um, because it's really nice to be able to put a face with the letter. So I really, really appreciate that because then I feel like I'm really talking to the person and we are just like really, really good friends. So this one, I first want to say that I love your YouTube channel. Your real talk videos are honest and hilarious. And I love that you look out for women who are on a budget unlike other YouTubers. Well, I, first of all, thank you because um, I ain't got it like that to be rolling in the cash, okay? So I really am always on a budget. The names in this email have already been changed. You can call me Mary. I have been with my boyfriend James now for almost three years. We make three years in December. I am 27, soon to be 28, and he is 29. We have been living together for over a year and a half already. When I met him, he was living at home with his parents, and I was living with a roommate and finishing my bachelor's degree in New York City. I encouraged him to move in with me shortly after my roommate moved out, and while no relationship is perfect, we make it work. He is my best friend, and I always thank God for having him in my life. He has shown me what true love really is. He has even started going to school because he, seen, he sees me as determined as I am to finish my MBA degree, and he wants to do better for me and our future together. I have been in two horrible long-term relationships prior to this, and I feel like I have wasted years of my life wanting a future with men who were not man enough for me or had no goals and aspirations. I would like for my boyfriend now to propose to me as I feel we have been together for a while. I don't want to push the subject on him, but usually when I talk about marriage or kids, he changes the subject. He has told me that one day we will get married and we have plans to move down south in two to three years. His friends have been in long-term relations with their girlfriends for five years, ten years, and so on. One of his friends even told me that he should put me through some shit before we get engaged. I won't even talk about that dumb... What? I won't even talk about that dumbass, but I just feel like a man shouldn't have shouldn't wait five to ten years to ask the woman he loves to marry him. I know so many women my age that use men for money or cheat on them left and right, and those boyfriends that they have are so quick to put a ring on their fingers. 
but the good woman gets stuck waiting and it's just not fair. I was in a relationship for six years prior to dating him with nothing to show for it. I just feel like I'm tired of waiting for a man to give me what I want. I think sometimes the proposal for women is a man showing her his commitment to having a future with her. It doesn't mean that a couple has to get married the next week. I've considered setting a time limit for this relationship. If he doesn't propose before a certain point because I refuse to be with someone who just isn't ready to take the next step. And I definitely won't won't move to a different state until I have a ring on my finger. April, am I being overdramatic or should I just let things take its course for however long? Am I wrong for feeling the way I do? Any advice you could give me could be great, even if this doesn't make it to YouTube. Sorry for the long email. I've included a picture of me and my boyfriend for you to see. Love your loyal subscriber, Mary. So, Mary has been with her boyfriend for three years and she wants to get proposed to. She wants him to propose to her. And she about to put a time limit on it because she doesn't feel like she should be with someone who doesn't want a long-term relationship or commitment. And she also feels like if he puts a ring on it, that it's, it's that's a committed relationship. That's where you're wrong, sweetheart. Okay, Mary, as much as I love you and as much as I am on your side, I'm going to have to let you know that's where you're wrong. Because it's because you put a ring on it like Beyonce says. Don't mean your ass is in a committed relationship. Don't mean he really want to be with your ass. Don't mean a whole bunch of other things that you may feel like it means. That rings are supposed to meet when they put it on a finger. Putting a ring on it does not have the same meaning as it used to so many centuries ago, okay? We are living in 2016 slash 17, and that commitment that that ring may mean to you and people that it used to mean to ain't there for everybody. So don't feel like because he puts a ring on your finger that that's going to make your relationship so strong and steady and committed because he could put that ring on your finger, girl, and be fucking the next bitch that same day he put that ring on your motherfucking finger. Sometimes somebody will put a ring on your finger just to shut your ass the fuck up, okay? Trust me when I tell you that, all right? So, yeah, you guys have been together for three years. And honestly, do you really think that three years is really a long time? Because three years is not really a long time. It may be longer than one year in a relationship or several months, but three years really isn't a long time in a relationship. So some people may move slower than others. What you want may not be what he wants right now. And sometimes what you want can't always be. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, just like I said with the last story, we have to meet in the middle and have a compromise and compromise and have an agreement with one another just because you're engaged does not make your relationship so much better than somebody who's not engaged that is just a ring that ring does really not solidify a whole lot of anything you know what i'm saying it's a ring and many times i tell people they say to me you'll never get married again and i say this a lot i'm never getting married again I'm, i won't get married again because for what it's a piece of paper and do you really honestly think that that piece of paper is going to stop you from cheating on your wife or your husband or stop you from being an asshole no what are you supposed to take out the piece of paper and be like you see this we are married Okay? And this means that you cannot cheat on me. And that person is supposed to be like, okay, you got it. I can't cheat on you because I have this paper. I really like this woman, but I'm not going to cheat on you because I have this paper. Okay? Or is it, it's, it's a piece of paper. It's, it's a piece of paper. Unfortunately, people don't take marriage and vows and relationships so serious like that. You know what I'm saying? Some people do. And let me tell you something. Sometimes I say a lot. If it ain't broke, what are you trying to fix? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sometimes you have to be patient because each person's time is going to come. You're talking about, oh, he has friends that have been in this relationship this amount of time, or this person is engaged, or this person. That's that person and that person's relationship, not you, Mary. You know what I'm saying? You are going for Mary and Bill and what you guys have going on, not for what Felicia and, 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 and Jack got going on. This is about Mary and Bill and what works for them. What works for somebody else may not work for you. What works good for me may not good be good for you. What's good for the goose is not good for the gander. You know that old saying, what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. It don't always work out, okay, the way you expect it to. And because it's a ring and it's a proposal, it may not work out for what you expect it to be. Don't go put in a time limit on something that's working well. Just like you said, you have your bullshit moments, but you guys make it work. And he loves you and you have motivated him to do the proper things in life and to be a better person. And I have not read in that email anywhere that he mistreats you or he cheats on you or he 
does this, anything. You are so thankful, thankful to God that you have found your best friend, you know what I'm saying? And he is in your life. So why put a timestamp on a relationship with somebody that is so good to you? You know what I'm saying? Because of what other people may have or what you have went through in your past relationship. Yeah, she was in a relationship for six years. Shit, bitch, I was in a relationship for 17 years. So my shit can over, it's, it's, it's over your shit. You know what I'm saying? I pass you. That's nothing. But just because you was in a relationship with somebody else for six years and it didn't work out, you cannot put that on Bill. You cannot use that excuse and hang the wool over his eyes because of what your past relationship is. That might have worked with somebody else, but this dude is one heck of a dude from what I've been reading from your email. And I don't think that he deserves a timestamp. You know what I'm saying? Each person has their own goals and each person has their own steps in life to take. And just because you're ready does not mean that he's ready. He may be ready to be in a committed relationship without any papers and he's happy with you and he wouldn't do anything in the world to fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? He's just happy and content and he ain't about to fuck it up. But here you are. You want that ring because everybody else got a motherfucking ring or this is how you feel. And he ain't even on it like that. He's happy with Mary. He's in love with Mary. Ain't no bitch gonna walk across your threshold and take him from you. You know what I'm saying? Because he just loves Mary and that's all it's about. Seems like that's all it's about is Mary, Mary, Mary. I'm gonna go back to school because of Mary. I'm doing this because of Mary. Shit, if you can get a motherfucking man to do all these certain things like you just described going back to school and doing this, then girl, you got it good because some men won't even get they fucking lazy ass up and get a job for a bitch but you got this nigga going back to school so that's one plus that you got over a whole lot of other females and to go and ruin it and put a time stamp on it bitch please the next nigga that you get might be some real fucking dumb ass negro that you really don't want to fuck with and then you like oh damn i sure miss bill hmm i wish bill was around right about now but no, I scared him off without putting a ring on it. Let me tell you something. This ain't Beyonce. You ain't singing that motherfucking song. I'm pretty sure you ain't on stage with some panties or a leotard dancing. Put a ring on it with a whole bunch of dancers behind it. This is your relationship with this young man. And I really feel like, you know what? You got a good thing going. Work on it together. Maybe he cannot afford a ring and maybe you're the type of person that's like oh it don't have to be extravagant it don't have to be like this it could be any old type of ring a lot of females say that shit and they can say it and mean it and can say it and don't mean it however you could tell a guy that all day till he's blue in the face but just because that's what you want that might not be what he wants maybe he wants to be able to uh, be able to <laughs> So like I was saying, just because that's what you want, maybe he don't feel comfortable being able to give you a half-ass ring or a half-ass marriage proposal. Maybe he's one of those who wants to be able to give you everything. Why do you think he's going to school to better himself? Because of you. For you. So sometimes you got to wait and be patient. Three years is not a long time. It's really not a long time. But you need to be patient because everybody has a motive and everybody has an agenda or a reason why they do things. And his agenda may not be yours. You might be somebody who is just perfectly fine with just living paycheck to paycheck or just having something simple. Whereas this man seems to me like he wants to make sure that he makes you happy and does everything that he can to make everything perfect for you. Because if it wasn't that way, he wouldn't go back to school and we try to better himself because of you. So really, Mary, I would put a kind of like a break on that timestamp of being proposed to because you're giving somebody an ultimatum. And I really think that when you do shit like that to people, it's so unfair. Like, it's basically saying, if you don't put a ring on my finger by this time, it's over between us. And it's like you're forcing the person to do what you want them to do, and it's not fair. You know what I'm saying? So now you got this man feeling like he's pressured into proposing to you when it's not that time. You know what I'm saying? And that's not fair. That's not fair. You should never put a time stamp on love. You know what I'm saying? If you guys are happy and you're in a relationship, then why the fuck are you complaining about it? Yeah, you want a ring? Who don't want a motherfucking ring? You got a good ass man. Bitch, be happy with that because like I said, a lot of niggas won't even get their lazy ass to fuck up and get a job for a bitch, okay? But you got a good man. So with that being said, I would really be patient and try to be really, really patient and concerned about the other person's feelings. Stop forcing something on someone that might just want the same thing you do, but in a different time frame. Because you don't want to scare them off, then you're going to be, what, lonely. Don't nobody want to be alone. Everybody want to be in love, but don't nobody want to be alone. But then some people don't want to be alone, and they want to be in a relationship, but they don't want to compromise with the other person. And it's all about compromising. You got 
work on this together. It's about two people, two people. You see my fingers are intertwined together. Two people because y'all are one and y'all work together as a team. And it's called teamwork, not, oh, you're going to do this because I said to do that. Please. I wish a motherfucker would give me a timestamp on some shit. I'd be like, you can go now, bitch. Bye. That's just my attitude, okay? So, let these young ladies know how you feel. Guys, I do apologize. I got to go get my daughter from work. I'm like 15 minutes late from getting her. It's super hot. I'm dehydrated. Oh, my God. <sighs> yes, I will see you guys on another video. Make sure you check out my other video because, you know, I upload two videos on Wednesdays now. So, make sure you check that out. Um, I don't even remember which one it is for tomorrow. Oh, it's a, it's a wig, my sister wig, which I'm not too pleased about, but yes. So I will see you guys real soon. Say Diva and Diva. Let's just make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and I love you guys as always. And yes, I'll be back on another video.